Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 28th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Hopefully a big win for the good guys today was the takedown of the Emotet botnet. Now, Emotet, of course, has been around for a while. Uh, what's a little bit different about this takedown is that it didn't just involve a couple of command and control servers, but authorities in the Ukraine uh, did serve a search warrant on the actual headquarters of what is believed to be the Emotet crew, the company, the organization behind this botnet. Some good video of that particular rate, kind of showing you the sophisticated adversaries we are up against here and what equipment they are using. After all, Emotet is probably one of the more prolific botnets and crimeware operations. Of course, Emotet operates like many of uh, these crime or operations uh, that uh, we have talked about in the past by essentially sending emails uh, with uh, Word documents and macros that the user is then supposed to execute. Even with Emotet Gun, this technique is probably not going away. So today we have a diary by Daniel looking at whether or not the attack surface reduction rules that Microsoft introduced can help us mitigate some of these attacks. And yes, uh, f to celebrate the takedown, uh, he is using Emotet as an example. So with the tag surface reduction rules, you can monitor and even block some behavior that you would not like to see on your Windows systems. You may say, why it didn't sort of Microsoft uh, introduce or include uh, rules like this uh, by default. Well, uh, sometimes this behavior is needed. So uh, these are rules that you have uh, to apply carefully. And uh, Daniel looked at a couple of that uh, look promising, like for example, to block all office applications from creating child processes. Daniel had mixed results with all of this. And uh, for example, the detection of uh, the child process itself didn't trigger, but what did trigger is block process creations from originating from PSExec and WMI commands. And yes, uh, Emotet does uh, use WMI as part of its macro code. And this is interesting behavior, but uh, as Daniel points out, particularly in enterprise networks, you often use WMI and PSXEC, so uh, you can't outright easily block it. If you want to look at more details, uh, just uh, check Daniel's uh, diary from today. And Google's uh, Go language uh, team uh, did uh, fix an interesting vulnerability in the Go get command. Now, uh, this command is executed as you are building a project, so it doesn't affect already built uh, software written in Go, but as so often, uh, Go uh, does uh, download dependencies, libraries and such uh, that are needed uh, to uh, create a project. And one of uh, the options here is to include C code. And uh, this C code is then compiled. And well, the idea here is that the GCC compiler is used uh, to compile it. But as uh, the command is executed, it first checks the current directory for the GCC binary. So what an attacker could do is they trick you into first downloading a packet that's called GCC. And since this all happens sort of automatically, you may not even notice it. Then later uh, they load a second package that is then downloaded as a C package and then the malicious code is called. So this vulnerability affects developers that code in go, it does not affect users running software created using Go. But then again, uh, Go is a very popular language these days, in particular for a lot of security researchers. And we just uh, learned, and I mentioned this, I think, in yesterday's uh, podcast about security researchers uh, being uh, sort of tricked into executing visual code projects that had uh, 
somewhat similar flaw that led to code execution as the program was being compiled. And in teaser lab found an interesting escape vulnerability in Azure's functions. Azure functions are well a serverless computing similar to what Amazon does is with Lambda. You upload your code and it's magically running within Azure. Well, the magic is actually provided by Docker containers. So what in teaser did here is first to upload a function that would provide them a shell into the Docker container, and then they use that to explore the Docker container the code was running in, and then used privilege escalation vulnerabilities to actually escape the Docker container. If you're using serverless computing, nothing you need or can do about this. Uh, Azure has fixed this particular problem, but of course, uh, the basic infrastructure and risks associated with that remain. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.